Hey, y'all. I'm Bud Elliott, and this is my College Football Summer School Series on Cover 3. I bring on the team experts from the 24-7 sports staff and ask them the questions I care about. No fluff. Which players will be toughest to replace? What position groups are sneakily better or worse than I realize? We get you the scoop on each team in 20 minutes or less. Let's go. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Summer School. This is the final edition. We got Notre Dame on, and for that, I'm going to the expert, Tim O'Malley of Irish Illustrated. Tim, welcome to Summer School. Hey, thanks for having me on. And we we finally connect. I, That's I've right. It's been a lot of lights and Tim, we, Tim is. Both of us have travel issues apparently, and those are affecting our lives. That's that's the problem here. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, a, an interesting year to cover the Irish last year, to be sure. Uh, nine and four on, on the record. Bill Connolly had them outside the top forty-five in offense and defense, but not much worse than that. So a fairly uh, balanced team that kind of started out really poorly and then got better down the stretch despite quarterback injury. What, what were your initial takes on, uh, on Marcus Freeman in year one? Yeah, the uh, I think everybody was all in on Marcus Freeman's first game against Ohio State because it was closer than people expected it to be. And, and of course, that's not really – that's not what Notre Dame fans eventually need. They need victories. But once they lost to Marshall the following game, I think that pretty much – Ended the honeymoon. The honeymoon was over for Marcus Freeman at that point. Uh, Marshall actually was not the worst team they lost to on the schedule. That was Stanford. And, and I, that is when a lot of Notre Dame fans wondered, what are we doing here? Because they didn't handle failure well, the loss to Ohio State. But I think that was a lot of people patting them on the back. Hey, you had them. You're the best, you're the best team with one loss in the country. You're going to run the table, all those type of things. When they lost to Marshall, of course, that's deflating. And then they come back, and they're able to really – destroy North Carolina and handle BYU. And they looked good. They looked like the offense was ro was rolling. The defense had found its footing. And then they lost to Stanford. And you're looking at a 4-3 and three Notre Dame team. And that just seemed ridiculous at the time. I'd, I'd say kudos to them for finishing or getting to 8-3. and three. I think it would have been a much different feeling for Notre Dame fans had they been able to beat USC and Caleb Williams out there. Of course, it was instead a coronation for Caleb Williams. He looked like Superman and had a force field around him the entire game. Uh, that loss punctuates eight and four eight and four is never good enough at Notre Dame um but ending the season with the bull win over an SEC team and kind of an exciting game was it didn't make up for the Marshall and Stanford game but nine and four going in the offseason and Marcus Freeman so well liked in the Notre Dame fan base I think it helped quite a bit it's rarely does a Gator Bowl victory mean that much like it did to Notre Dame Caleb Williams uh we were out there kind of messing around after Elite 11 and he hit the upright twice in a row from the 50 on back-to-back -back throws. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. okay. so you're, like he, you said, super. He could have done that uh, against Notre Dame that night rolling left. So that was, yes. a, uh, it was, it was quite a show. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, let's, let's start here with, with the offense. Uh, quite a few questions to get to. So uh, an offense that last year was kind of difficult to judge because of the quarterback injury and, and some other factors I know we'll get into, but Tommy Reese does go to Alabama. I'm fresh off SEC media day. And of course, Nick Saban is extremely excited about the coordinator he got. I wouldn't expect him to say anything less. Notre Dame's coordinator search was kind of a saga in it of itself, right? Yeah. Like Andy Ludwig is on campus at, at a game and then doesn't end up at Notre Dame and they go with Parker. How do we, how should we feel about this? Yeah. The, the, the positive there is of course there's continuity from Tommy Reese's offense. It's going, and I, and I think Jared Parker, he's going to look to obviously implement a lot of his own thoughts, his own schemes. But year one, it is pretty easy to carry over what Tommy Reese's offense did right, eradicate some of the things that didn't work. Now, a lot more is going to work. And Tommy Reese would have been successful here this year as well because of Sam Hartman. There is a giant difference between having Sam Hartman at the controls with a receiving core that has gotten a year older. Now you have established running game. You have a very good offensive line led by one of the best tackles in the country. I think any offensive coordinator would have some decent success with Notre Dame. Now they need more than that. I, I think in the modern era, you need to be in that 38 to 40 points a game range. And it's, it's, it's tough for Notre Dame has really not been able to get there. They had it in 2019, uh, but that is because they're scoring 66 against New Mexico and you're scoring 52 against Bowling Green. And it's kind of inflated. Um, the offense I expect to be the most improved unit on the team, but that is mostly, it's not a shot at Reese. It's because they have Sam Hartman and, he's that fine line where he can be one of the best quarterbacks of the country, but isn't really a top NFL prospect. And then he transfers to Notre Dame. It's a, it's like a, it's a one year gift for Marcus Freeman. And then it's almost a restart at quarterback next year, but they'll bring in CJ Carr so they can start building at that point. They needed Sam Hartman. If they didn't get Hartman and Tyler Buckner would have stayed, obviously if they didn't get Sam Hartman, 
I still think there'd be trepidation around Notre Dame because Tyler Buckner remains a work in progress as a passer. For sure. I, as an ACC guy, I've, I've seen plenty of Sam Hartman. I'm extremely happy that he transferred uh, out to yeah. Notre Dame. I, I guess there's some questions. Like, the guy's played a ton of ball, right? Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, slow mesh, slow mesh. But D- Dave Clawson will quickly refute that and, and tell you they only ro- run the slow mesh about 20% of the time. And, and Hartman really stands out to me in his third and long throws. Like he mm-hmm. really – even when Wake was not running slow mesh, because they don't run it on third and long, because n- nobody's going to care about, right, about the right. threat of of a you know extended extended give, his numbers were like extremely beyond expectation, which is you know s- speaks to a guy who's pretty clutch. and And I'm really excited to see what he can do with the protection that that Notre Dame yeah. line yeah. should be able to give him. Um, my one question here, and this has kind of been an ongoing thing with some, with some of the, our, our our fans on Cover Three. I talked to some guys who had played Notre Dame. And it was the first two thirds of the season. I'm not going to give away which, which staffs. Right, right. They were like, "These receivers don't scare us." Yeah. They play single coverage, and the response we got in the comments was, "Okay, well, our guys got open." I'm like, "Well, yeah. If they played single coverage the whole time, they're going to get open a lot." But Notre Dame fans tell me that this receiver group got a lot better down the stretch, and that they're going to take a huge jump this year. Which that's a huge deal because Hartman had dudes to throw to at Wake. I'm not sure how many people realize that. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting take with uh, Notre Dame fans looking at the wide receivers and the national view of it. And it's somewhere in the middle, in my opinion. If you're a Notre Dame fan and you know what they have at wide receiver, like most people believe their best talent was a freshman last year who caught one pass for a 41 yard touchdown. Merriweather. Yeah, Tobias Merriweather. People could understand why he wouldn't get on the field. Well, it's probably because he didn't know all the checks, didn't know the offense. And funny enough, coaches, quarterbacks, and offensive co- offensive coordinators really like that in a player so that they know what they're doing out there. So Tobias Merriweather should have a breakout year this year. Do we sometimes anoint sophomores too early? Yes, but the best Notre Dame receivers over the recent 15 seasons, Michael Floyd, Golden Tate, even Equinemius St. Brown, Will Fuller, they became great players or very, very good receivers as sophomores. I don't think it's out there to think that Tobias Merriweather could have a breakout season. The most consistent player is Jaden Thomas. Now, he he is not a 65-catch, 10-touchdown guy. But he's going to lead them in snaps because he can play inline tight end. He can play the slot. He can play the boundary. Good runner after the catch. Great blocker, which is important because Notre Dame's going to run the ball a lot downhill with Audrey Gestime. And he, he is the one that improved most as a receiver in a calendar year. When I first saw Jaden Thomas out there against Marshall and they were throwing a pass in the flat on third and three, asking him to get a yard, he fell down. It looked like he got shot. And you're thinking to yourself, what, what are you doing as an athlete that you can't pull that off? He looks nothing like that now. He looked like nothing like that at the end of the year. Still after that, I think it's a work in progress. Chris Tyree has moved from running back to slot. He's one of the fastest players on the team. The staff loves him. I am in full show me mode. I want to see Chris Tyree. I'm not saying he'll implode and not be a decent player because he's fast and he's a senior and he's confident. He's he's played a lot of football for Notre Dame. But I just don't know if he's be a difference maker in the slot the way a lot of other people do. Uh, Deion Colsey was a highly rated player. He's a junior now. He basically missed the first two months last season. He came in around Halloween weekend, caught some passes against Syracuse to the point where I was sitting next to someone in the press box at Syracuse and looked down and said, is that Deion Colsey? Which I think he was amazing. He could possibly be in the game. But thereafter, he caught 10 passes, nine for first downs and eight on third down. So he did kind of find a niche in the offense. And then we may be overrating this guy for his freshman year. And I I, I try not to do this with freshmen ever, but Jaden Greathouse is an early enrollee and I, I'm not going in the blue goal game. I'm going in the blue goal game, but also what I saw in the spring and everything I heard about him. He is just a natural pass catcher. He's a very good wide receiver. I think he's going to play in the slot. He'll make plays, and he will be Sam Hartman's guy to carve up underneath and move the chains on third down because they need that guy losing Michael Mayer. Michael Mayer was a crutch for not only Tommy Reese calling plays, but for Drew Pine and Tyler Buckner, obviously. For sure, and it's it's on Parker. If you have a totally loaded receiver room where everybody's a freak, then you can sort of say, okay, like you can't get on the field until you know all the checks and everything. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have a lot, like if you have some special athletes but not a great depth of special athlete, then it's kind of on you to figure out how can I get this guy on the field and use that athleticism. I completely agree, yes. Right, yeah. like I, I used to cover Jimbo Fisher, and he runs w- one of the more notably complicated offenses out there for receivers. And it was like, really? Like Kelvin Benjamin can't get on the field? And like three years later, you know, he catches the – that, that you know, pass to win the national title. Right, right. I, I'm really interested to see how they use, you know, how, how they use these young guys. But you got to think with Hartman. 
they're a lot better through the air, right? I, oh, I think they'll be much better through the air. But now, to be fair to people that are, want to downgrade the receiving core, I wouldn't be saying all this with Drew Pine as the quarterback. I think they would struggle through the air with Drew Pine and these receivers. If you have, I think if you have Drew Pine or Tyler Buckner's passing ability, Buckner's a really good runner. He could succeed at Alabama. But just as a pure passer, if you have those two, you need Michael Floyd, Golden Tate, and Will Fuller as your wide receivers at Notre Dame to succeed. They Sam Hartman will make these guys better, but I – they are better than the national media could ever know because you have to look at the stats in the film. Um, I don't know they're as good as Notre Dame fans say they're going to be, but um, I, I am in positive wait and see mode with the wide receivers. So I'm in, I'm in negative wait and see mode with the safeties. I'm in positive wait and see mode with the wide receivers. Offensive line, I just have it in my notes. Awesome. But I do have, like, they got to replace both guards. Is, yeah. Is yeah. that a concern or like, do, do they, I, they recruit the position so well? I, should I be concerned here? It is a concern for our Tim Priester um, at Irish Illustrated, who's been doing this for 40 years. And he's, you know, Jarrett Patterson's a four-year starter. Josh Lugg was a four-year regular. That's not easy to replace with a redshirt freshman, Billy Schroth, who's going to be a very good player. Um, they have Andrew Kristoffic at right guard, who started six games in 2021, was beaten out last year when they decided to move Patterson to guard. Um, the backups are all top 200 players. Now, none of them are proven. But they're all top 200 players. You got to be able to find something out of all Maybe 200 not. players. Billy Schroff, who they love, a former starter, and then everybody Notre Dame fans all love Rocco Spindler. He hasn't done anything yet at Notre Dame in a Notre Dame uniform, but he's a top 75 player and he's a true junior. Now on his third offensive line coach, and this is one of the rare instances where a change out of Harry Heastand is going to help an offensive lineman. It is going to help Rocco Spindler. He needed a change at offensive line coach, so. It's a reasonable concern if they're going to Ohio State for game one. If you can't have this line ready by game five, you're, you're in the wrong situation here. I mean, Joe Alt, Blake Fisher, and a fifth-year senior starting center in Zeke Carell, who started a playoff game in 2020. As, I mean, that that is that's enough, right? You can start with that. And aside from maybe Georgia, I don't know who else is starting with more than that. No, exactly right. I, I look at their schedule just you know off the top of my head. Clemson – Really good defensive interior. Yep. USC may be upgraded. Like if Bear Alexander plays to his ceiling, certainly sure, would be. Sure. Uh, Ohio State has some dudes. Everybody else kind of doesn't. Like Wake Forest notably lost one kid to the second round of the draft, another guy with Oklahoma. So like they're kind of bare in there. Stanford, I'm going to assume that Stanford's not reloaded with studs on the defensive yeah, interior. Yeah. If they did, Jackson Moore doesn't fall anymore on the farm, is it? Yeah. That, was, that was a different era. No, it is not. Um, quickly uh, on this, unless I missed something. The loss of Diggs is not a particularly huge deal, right? Estime is pretty good. Yeah, Estime is the starter. Um, I think Diggs is one of the top 12 players on the team. But the thing is, Jadarian Price, okay. who most people wouldn't know about, um, he had to sit out last year. He tore his Achilles in July. So it's been a month. It's been a year. Uh, behind the scenes, Notre Dame coaches were telling everybody that Jadarian Price was their best running back last year, including Estime and Diggs, and that he was going to start. If that's somewhat true, then now they have Audric Estime and Jadarian Price. They got Devin Ford from Penn State, who I think is more of a insurance number three running back, special teamer. Uh, Jeremiah Love is one of their faster players coming in as a freshman. I think he's a change of pace guy. He's not more than 35 carries, but you know, hey, if, if 15 of those carries matter, that's a pretty big deal for your change of pace fourth string guy. Jabron Payne is also a, a running back there, but it, it's the Estime show. But if Price is healthy, I don't expect him to be better than Estime, especially one year removed from ruptured Achilles. I think those guys usually take two years, and I know that. Uh, there can be Achilles pain as you get more and more use. Uh, from the Varsity podcast, Sean Crawford, an ex Notre Dame cornerback and safety, he ruptured his Achilles and he said he was much, he was fine for two months. And boy, he started wearing down in November. Now he played every snap. Jadarian Price won't have to do that. All right, Sam, switching over to the defensive side of the ball. I, I have a, some questions about this unit, but I feel like it should be taking a, a bit of a step forward. Up, up front, you, you lose the, and I always mispronounce their name, uh, Adamiola. Yeah, yeah. Right? At, Justin and Jason Adamiola. Yep. You, you, you lose the twins. You lose Chris Smith, who played, you know, not a ton of snaps, and then you lose Foskey. It, right. Do they have like I know they have a lot of experience here. Is there somebody that fans at home should know who's like a difference maker? You know, a top first round, maybe you know, top one hundred type pick. This is this is the question I've been asking and answering all off season. I said in the spring, and I, I still think this is accurate that Notre Dame on the defensive line has eight really good reserves. Four of them have to start. So can three of those guys that I claim are really good reserves become starters? Now, number one would be replacing Foskey as a senior, Jordan Botello. Um, 
His pass rush rate for pro football focus was better than Foskey. That's not even close to having enough snaps for that. He had a very good day in the Gator Bowl when Foskey elected not to play. Patello should be very good off the edge. I don't think he's an every down player, though, at Viper. That's the boundary defensive end in a 4 3. He's backed by two former linebackers that are sophomores, uh, Junior Tui Halamaka and Joshua Burnham. They were supposed to be the future middle linebacker and weak side linebacker. They've been moved to Viper. I think they'll be used in different packages. Inside, you have Howard Cross, who's been a solid player for a long time. He's a fifth-year starter, nose, undersized nose tackle, but they like him at nose instead of defensive tackle. It's always confused a lot of us. Um, Riley Mills has been Notre Dame's breakout option for three years, so let's see if he can do it for your number three as a defensive tackle as a senior. Riley Mills looks the part, and it's time for Riley Mills to play that way. Uh, they brought in um, Javante Jean-Baptiste from Ohio State. He is going to work in tandem with Nana Asafa Mensa as – Graduate students at strong side defensive end. It's always good to have the 22-year-old men there trying to hold the point against the run. But what I'm naming here are all guys no one really knows about. We think they're good. I just don't know how good they can be. Even the backups, Gabriel Rubio is a hardly rated player. He's entering his junior year. He has to step forward. Jason Anye was a low-rated player who looked phenomenal in the spring playing nose tackle to back up Howard Cross. I named eight guys, nine guys. You need three of those guys to be legitimate starters, not just nine guys that are pretty good reserves on a playoff team backing up starters. These Somebody has to step up. I think Batello and Mills and Cross are the ones that people should look for. I was looking forward to that. Uh, uh, Lee, Lee Fowl and Bertrand, I thought, were like solid, fairly reliable players by the numbers last year. Maybe not special. Like, do, do either of those guys project to take a huge step forward? Or, or maybe I'm wrong about them being solid. Maybe, maybe yeah, maybe, I think I think Bertrand there. was solid. He was the defensive MVP. Uh, fans, Notre Dame fans that don't like J.D. Bertrand, remember the three plays he messed up. That's the problem. They don't they don't think of the 350 that he made plays on. And, and it's, yeah. it, he's a solid middle linebacker. He's a very good college middle linebacker. He's much faster than he's given credit for because they want everybody to be Jalen Smith and that's not the situation. Maris Leofow, I think, is moving from the will linebacker to an edge rushing role. When I remember I was mentioning they need to find somebody to help Patello in different packages. I think Leofow will be used in a role that Clark Lee kind of found for him as a redshirt freshman year. He was a little bit miscast at weak side linebacker last year. They've actually moved Jack Kaiser to the weak side from Rover. Um, because I think the Rover now, the strong side linebacker in the modern game, is the nickel. In fact, yeah. the nickel played much more than Jack Kaiser did last year, to the point where Al Golden, the defensive coordinator, and you never hear this, a defensive coordinator say to reporters, you're right, I do have to play Jack Kaiser more because we were basically asked, like, why isn't he in? <laughs> what are, what am I missing here that you sub him out? Can't you sub somebody else out for the nickel? So they're going to do it. They're moving Kaiser over. I think Kaiser and Bertrand are good linebackers, major six bowl game linebackers. Does that make sense? If, if I don't say yeah. playoff linebackers, major six bowl game linebackers. And now their backups are redshirt freshmen, Jalen Sneed, who was highly recruited from the South Carolina area, uh, Nolan Ziegler took steps forward in the spring. For the first time, I think they're actually going to play their young backups because I think J.D. Bertrand can benefit from not having to take 650 snaps. Yeah. Not being able to come off the field ever on third and 15 as a middle linebacker, that is not a healthy third down defense. So if you can implement some packages there, I think Bertrand in 100 fewer snaps can be more productive. And that that's that's strange to say because, as you know, tackle, 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 tackle doesn't mean production. I think he can make some plays. This is his third year as a starter. I, I'm very high on Bertrand and Kaiser. Leofau is in the special interest wait and see category. We think we have seen him have tremendous practices and two good games against North Carolina. Now we need to see him do something. They're not playing North Carolina this year. So Maris Leofau has to do something in another game. But I think they will move him around in different packages and he can be a helpful player this season. I love what they have at corner. I mean, oh, yeah. Morris and Hart. Like, dude, Harper can play the Oklahoma State kid. I yeah, know a couple yeah. coaching buddies of mine like the um, I should put the I should put the kid's name in my notes, but the, I wrote Rhode Island that like oh and, yeah, the, oh, the, Antonio the Carter. Line. Uh, that's he's coming over and he's going to play some safety because they're so deep at corner. It's I totally agree in the corner. Morrison's a possible All American. Benjamin Morrison. The key for Benjamin Morrison this year is we don't say he was great for a freshman. We just have to say he's great. Because great, for, you get a lot of leeway when you're a freshman. <laughs> You get beat once as a freshman. Like, oh, he's a freshman. He's going to be awesome. But now now it's time. Uh, I think he could be an All-American. He was a freshman All-American. Yeah, Cam Hart coming back. Three shoulder surgeries for Cam Hart. Otherwise, he would be in the NFL or he would have given a shot at the NFL. But that helps Notre Dame. He's back on the field side. He's a three-year starter now. Their fourth or fifth best corner is Clarence Lewis, and he started a playoff game as a freshman. Like, that is depth. Jaden Mickey has yeah. kind of moved ahead of him. Clarence Lewis will be moving around. And, and as you said, um, Thomas Harper from Oklahoma State is probably going to be the nickel. So, 
The corners are very good. I thought their best freshman enrollee was Christian Gray, who was a corner. It's going to be hard to get on the field. So never has anyone ever done one of your shows. And people said cornerback is the deepest, best spot on Oregon football team. But that has finally happened. This is a first. I didn't hear you say the name, the word safety, though. Um, no, no, I did not. Yeah. They lose a lot of safety. I mean, like, now I know Joseph was not as good as a uh, guy in the Baltimore Ravens from two years ago. No, like, he was like, no he Kyle Hamilton. Yeah. yeah. And people Houston expected Griffin. more. That's kind of how that goes. Sometimes you come in. He was an All American two years ago. They expected the All American again, and they didn't get it. That was, it's kind of the way looking at Joseph. Are they okay at safety? Yeah. So, uh, safety's coach Chris O'Leary, who I like, uh, said, I don't see a weakness in our safety crew. And immediately everybody at Irish Illustrated and every reporter in the room thought, well, I see four. So I could explain this to you right now. But what he meant was he doesn't see drop offs. He has a sixth year senior in DJ Brown who has started 20 games and played 50. He has a senior in Xavier Watts who came on last year. He has a senior in Ramon Henderson. He brought in Thomas Harper. He has Antonio Carter coming over from Rhode Island. So what he has is a baseline solid everything. You really need Xavier Watson and Antonio Carter to be better than baseline solid if you want to be a playoff team. They're not going to go out and lose a bunch of games because of safety play. But can they go out and win any games because of safety play? That has not happened since Hamilton left. Uh, and he's been gone for a year and a half, as you know, because he got hurt in the in the mid midway through the 2021 season. So I, I get his point. Chris O'Leary was talking like a coach, not like – us on the uh, trying to have a conversation here about college football where we say, Oh, there's no weaknesses. Are there strengths? He didn't say there were strengths. He said, there's no weaknesses. So I think it's a baseline solid level of play right there. If you look at this team, I mean, there, there should be six guaranteed wins or at least like with this level of talent, given the veteran quarterback and what you have along the lines of scrimmage with, with, with the depth there, like Brian Kelly was notoriously good for not losing games in which yes. he was favored. You know, like, like now they didn't always play in a row. It was forty in a row because Cincinnati was not an underdog in that game. So since it was a one point favorite, and that's it was right. a pretty impressive run. So I mean, like the floor of this team to me feels pretty conclusively established. The, the ceiling, I, I'm I'm not totally sure about. And I I have one more guy to ask about here. We don't talk a lot of special teams on this, but now I am asking about special teams yet again. So. Their punter was sneaky good. Yeah, he left. Uh, John Scott has retired, uh, much to the chagrin of the Yale transfer. Came over from Notre Dame. It was awesome the entire year. He became a cult hero at Irish Illustrated. But uh, he is retired. Um, they do. They brought in another punter from Penn that is going to challenge Bryce McPherson, who's one of the best athletes on the team. So pretty funny story. Bryce McPherson was a freshman, true freshman last year, showed up in June and started beating receivers and defensive backs in sprints. To the point where people are looking around like, what? What is going on with this guy? They said, uh, Brian Mason, who's now at the Colts, the special teams coordinator, said, quote, unquote, Bryce McPherson won the kickoff job in about five minutes was how good he was at it. <laughs> he tore his groin warming up in Columbus. They had to throw in a walk-on. The walk-on did well the whole season. So we've been joking. Notre Dame has the deepest kickoff coverage. Uh, they have the deepest kickoff specialist unit in the country. But uh, they should have good special teams. Spencer Schrader came in from South Florida to be a reliable kicker. Um, Bryce McPherson and Ben Krim will handle the punting. But uh, John Sott was a national treasure last year, if he's listening. It's a shame he hung it up. Uh, it's the best Yale transfer you're going to find. Awesome. Tim, I, I really, really enjoy the conversation. Oh, excuse me. I said Yale. He's a Harvard transfer. He's about to explode if you heard that. So he's a Harvard transfer. That is uh, – thank God I caught myself there. That would that would have been a problem. Harvard – wait, the – this show's kind of partial to Yale because Barton, you know, but played well, for right. uh, – right. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, but I really enjoyed this. I'm, I'm glad we were able to finally connect. And you, I mean, you, you run such a great site over there at, at Irish Illustrated. And, uh, definitely a lively board. <laughs> they, they are, they are passionate. Yeah, they're a lively board today too. <laughs> to try not to stop by today. <laughs> oh gosh, I, I've, I've been here at AC Media today, so I, I have not. Uh, yes. Not, well, I mean, if you're watching at home, today's the day the Harbaugh stuff came out, and more Northwestern stuff, and maybe even more stuff coming this afternoon. Apparently, so yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Awesome, Tim. I, I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me on and good luck traveling home. Yes, sir. Yes.